Self-doubt can be a crippling, evil, soul-sucking son of a bitch. The problem with self-doubt is that if we don't learn how to deal with it, it can end up controlling our entire life. And the end result, definitely not a life we're stoked about. I remember thinking there was something really wrong with me because of the ridiculous amount of self-doubt that I had. And I'd always tried to numb those feelings of self-doubt through distractions like social media, video games, weed, alcohol, and I always ended the day feeling so much worse. And this process kind of went on for a while. It just constantly was in this vicious cycle of just self-sabotage. I stopped taking myself seriously. I ate like shit. I still went to the gym, thank God, but I really half-assed it. I also was creating content that was not fulfilling to me personally, and uh, it felt just really mediocre. I stopped putting myself out there in social environments and basically lost all of my confidence. But worst of all, I felt really ashamed of myself. This wasn't the life that I expected after graduating from college. Now this period of my life took place shortly after COVID. I remember having a wedding to shoot for one of my college buddies and finding out the news that COVID was a thing. I remember thinking to myself, like, is it really worth it to shoot the wedding? And I was like, yeah, of course it's worth it. But I had this fear in the back of my mind. What if I get my whole family sick? This period of our lives was just really uncertain. I think we can all agree that we didn't know what the fuck was going on. There was doubt everywhere. I never really explored self-doubt in my life up until this point. And I think that's really because I just didn't care deeply about anything. <laughs> to be honest with you. But after COVID hit, I shot the wedding. Thankfully, nobody got sick. And about one or two months after that was when I moved to Austin. I was living in Houston before and didn't have shit to do once we moved here. <laughs> we moved here to go out and explore and to really enjoy the fruits of Austin, but we couldn't do that because everything was closed down. And me shooting weddings and doing freelance video and photo came to a stop as well because nobody was in operation. Nobody really cared about marketing. But I knew for a fact that I didn't want to do weddings anymore. Weddings were always unfulfilling for me. Never really felt purposeful. Most of all, they were a pain in the ass. I could tell you some stories about weddings that I've had, but I'll save that for another video. During this time, I realized that the one thing that I was avoiding this entire time was starting a YouTube channel. So I started a YouTube channel, got really messy, realized a lot of uh, things that I needed to work on with myself. <laughs> Self-doubt being one of those things. Putting myself out there on video kind of like this was a challenge for me. And also straight out of college, I freelanced and made money that way. And so I was kind of like in the space of like, what do I do to make money right now? Like I have no fucking idea. I got a degree in finance in college, but man, just the idea of pursuing that didn't sound sexy to me whatsoever. But I was just at this place where like, I don't know what to do with my life, my content. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what I want to share because I don't feel like I have enough life experiences to really talk about anything. So I just threw myself into it. When I look back on these videos, like they actually are so cringy, <laughs> so cringy. And they're still there at the bottom of my channel if you care to look. During the pandemic, I closed off a lot of relationships in my life. A lot of good friends that I used to hang out with didn't know anybody here in Austin yet. Felt really secluded and alone. We all felt the self-doubt at the time, but I didn't know how to handle it. I thought that, you know, there was something really wrong with me because of how often I was dealing with these thoughts every day. So I leaned towards books, kind of became obsessed with books and a little unhealthy obsession there because I felt like books were going to solve my life problem, which was my self-doubt. And they did help, but they sort of just put a band-aid over it. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it wasn't necessarily something that was life-changing. Later on, this turned into me coping with the self-doubt through those distractions that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It became this vicious cycle of not moving the needle forward and just feeling stuck. And, and not only feeling stuck, but with the things that I was distracting myself with, burying myself even deeper in the hole. The more doubt that I felt, the less I would take action. And the less I would take action, the less evidence that I would have to not feel self-doubt. So after these last couple years, becoming best friends with self-doubt and learning how to deal with it, here are some things that I've learned 
and uh, maybe you can use this to help you step out of your own way and create a life that actually lights you up. Now, number one is realizing that self-doubt is strictly internal. It's not something that everyone is waking up in the morning and thinking about how incapable you are of doing the thing that is making you feel that self-doubt. It is all happening in the mirror. It is strictly internal. This is why it's really important to remind yourself that the only person getting in your way is you. If you drown in the self-doubt, if you let the self-doubt dictate you in every move of your day, you're gonna stay stuck. Maybe you've heard this quote, it's a pretty popular one, but everything starts and ends with you. The self-doubt starts with you and it can also end with you. And one way to make it end is to just literally step out into the unknown take some courage, but just lean into the dis discomfort, leaning into the unknown and, and, and doing it because you know that it's better than just drowning in the self-doubt. So start treating yourself like a friend. When you hear those thoughts in your mind, nurture yourself. Don't, don't treat yourself like the enemy because if you don't treat yourself like a friend, who will? Yes, there are some amazing people out there, but it starts and ends with you. It's really helpful just to think about how no one actually cares. <laughs> I know it's counterintuitive because we want people to care about us. But when it comes to our self-doubt, it can be a freeing, freeing thought to realize that nobody cares. So hopefully this frees up your ability to just go out and do the thing that's scaring you. The second realization that I had about self-doubt is that self-doubt is actually a good thing. Why? Because it means you deeply care about that thing. If you didn't care about it, then you wouldn't doubt yourself. And you can think about a job you've hated. Did you ever doubt yourself on the job? Did you ever clock in and doubt your capabilities of serving the table of bartending? No, you just went in there, you did the job and you you know, clocked out and went back home. But if it's a job that you really care about, I'll speak for myself personally, I really care about how I come off on camera. So I do a lot of prep in doing so, but I also deal with a little bit of doubt. Is this topic worth talking about? Is this gonna hit with people? Should I share this story? Should I not? Oh, where am I feeling the self-doubt? Okay, how can I lean into that and, and, and maybe reduce the self-doubt to a point where I can just press record? Just remember that every day is a new day to define yourself. What happened yesterday doesn't define tomorrow or today unless you allow it. So this is where it's important to just step out of your own way and just do the thing. And also self-doubt can be a good indicator that you should pursue that thing. The more resistance you feel towards something, the more you should probably give it a shot. So what's one thing in your life that you're heavily resisting right now? Is it a new career path? Is it a new relationship? Or is it asking somebody out on a date? Or is it ending a specific relationship? That can be a tough one. Are you feeling resistance towards ending the relationship because you are afraid of going out on dates again, exposing yourself to new people, exposing yourself to rejection? The instinctual thing is to search for those distractions, to find something else to put your mind towards. But we always have to remember that the more that we distract ourselves, the deeper we dig ourselves in the hole. Just imagine if that thing that is scaring you and giving you so much resistance ended up working out. Because it's very easy to think about all the ways it couldn't work, but what if it did end up working out? How awesome would it be to lean into that self-doubt right now? Food for thought. And let me ask you this. Would you allow your child to spend time with someone who speaks to your child the way that you speak to yourself? If not, then why are you doing that to yourself? And let me tell you, I've been there plenty of times, so I understand but it's important to understand the way that you're talking to yourself because if you continue talking to yourself this way, it'll become normal. And every single opportunity that will come your way, you're just gonna shit talk yourself out of the, the opportunity. This is how you stay stuck. You are the one who is spending the most time with yourself every single day. Why not learn how to talk to yourself like a friend? Why not plant one small seed every single day that's gonna support you along the way? Even if it doesn't feel real, just planting the seed, you never know what that'll grow into later. Because in the end, the person who pays the biggest price of all is you, if you continue allowing this negative self-talk to happen. Through my journey, I've learned that it's just like a muscle. You don't always wanna to go to the gym, but if you continue going to the gym, you stay consistent, you continue doing the workout that is difficult, maybe is not super exciting, 
but you do it anyways and you eat right, support yourself with the right nutrients and you continue just doing that in the midst of chaos, you're going to build the muscle. You're going to trim off the fat. You're going to create a better life for yourself. You're going to look better in the mirror. You're going to have healthier conversations with yourself. So treat it like a muscle. Even when it, you don't feel like it, just plant a small seed. Not every day is gonna be great. Not every workout is great and that's okay. But some other things that you can do when you are feeling those really low moments is to write about it, to go on a walk, to put on some music that you know will uplift you and put you into a, a better mood. And also give yourself the grace to sit in it whenever you feel like you need to. You know, we have our tough times, we have our bad days. You know, last week I got really sick. Getting back on my feet has been a little difficult, just in terms of mental, not just physical. Physically, I feel okay. Um, I feel okay enough to go back in the gym and work out, but I noticed that my mental has just been low like <laughs> it's crazy what sickness will do to you mentally and so when you are feeling that way give yourself the grace to allow it when you allow it for a specific amount of time don't allow it forever but when you're when you allow it once it's time to really get after it you have all this energy because you, you allowed yourself to sit in that place now let's go you know, do something else, <laughs> do the opposite of what we were doing. But sometimes we just, we just need to sit in that hole for a little bit and just allow the, the feeling to just be. If you feel like it's just impossible for yourself to get out of that yourself, find someone that you can lean on and trust and just discuss whatever the fuck you're feeling. I always find that just simply talking about it helps. <laughs> you could talk to the wall about it. Sometimes in the shower, I'll just talk about my feelings as if I'm talking to somebody. And it does help in a weird way to just talk out loud about what I'm experiencing, what I'm feeling. If you don't feel like talking to somebody, you don't wanna tell anybody about your problems, then just talk out loud. It actually could possibly help. Okay, now I wanna talk a little bit about some mindset shifts to overcome the self-doubt. The first thing is to avoid fluffy, positive affirmations. What I mean by this is just looking in the mirror and saying you're Superman. <laughs> like I, I, that personally doesn't work for me. Maybe it works for you and if it does, then let me know what I'm doing wrong. I found that positive affirmations are good, but there has to be evidence behind it. So for example, if I show up every week and I just press record and I create the thing, regardless of how it does, then I know that that's evidence to overcome the self-doubt because I'm controlling what I can control. So in your case, what is it that you can control? Do one small thing every single day, put on the workout gear, go to the gym, uh, say hi to a stranger, press record. And if you don't know where to start, just imagine what a successful version of yourself would do. A successful version of yourself who is really trying to get after it in the gym would just sit out the clothes every night before bed. You could say no to that glass of wine at night. You could uh, replace video games with reading a book. There's small things all around that we could do. So I have faith in you, you can figure that one out, but do one small thing every single day so that you can stack up this evidence that counteracts the self-doubt. And please stop comparing yourself to other people. The only person that you should compare yourself to is yourself. Who were you yesterday and who do you wanna to become tomorrow? A helpful question here to think about is, what can you do today that would impress the next level version of yourself? If you could fast forward in life and think back to this moment, what would you be grateful that you did today? And we all know that motivation is overrated. You can't rely on motivation alone. It's not going to get you to where you wanna go. It feels great in the moment and it feels great when we have it and we should act on it when we have it, but we can't depend on it. We have to depend on discipline if we really want to step out of that self-doubt. Lean on discipline because discipline is going to get you results. A good recipe is to think, what can I do now that will make myself feel better later? This is also called delayed gratification. Another mindset shift is to create more than you consume. Create more of your life than you consume of other people's lives. Create more of your life more than you read a book. When you're creating more than you're consuming, 
your life is so much better. You're less prone to comparison. You know that you're moving the needle forward. You are doing things that you can control. Regardless if you're creative or not, we're all creators in some sort of way, whether it's the business, whether it's the impact, the impact you have on your team at work, the impact you have on your, your kids or your partner. We're always creating something, whether we're conscious of it or not. So be mindful of what you're creating. Create something intentionally and stop allowing yourself to, to just drown in consumption and distraction and feeling like shit afterwards because you just spent 20, 30 minutes scrolling on social media and now your life sucks and you hate yourself. <laughs> We're so dramatic, man. I'm also laughing right now because I can hardly hear <laughs> because of my sickness. I, I don't know what's going on, but my ears are so fucking clogged. I sound really muffled right now. <laughs> and I'm trying to just like not think about it, but it is kind of throwing me off. Now, overall, remember that self-doubt is going to creep up every step of the way of life. Like it's going to be there. But the antidote to self-doubt is building confidence. And the way that you build that confidence is to build the evidence that says you're good dude just keep doing the thing that you're doing and inevitably your success will come to the table control what you can control but most of all give yourself the grace give yourself the grace to fuck up give yourself the grace to be human to not be perfect to realize that life is a process and through my mistakes, I learned the most about myself. I learned the most about my path. I learned the most about the people around me. I learned the most about the impact I want to make. It's through the mistakes that our self-doubt is so fearful of that we learn the most about life. Nobody is perfect. And the point is not to wake up tomorrow into blissful perfection. <laughs> like Steve Jobs didn't build Apple overnight and Nike didn't just happen to fall on Phil Knight's doorstep one day. Everything is a process and it should be that way. Anything meaningful in life is a process. Just remember that you're not alone with self-doubt and uh, it's not just you who deals with it. We all deal with it and it's going to be all right. Just continue leaning into it and don't let that self-doubt define you or your potential. The last thing I want to leave you with is what if it did work out? What if, what if it did work out and all you had to do was just move past that self-doubt and create the life of your dreams? Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you and I hope you found a lot of value from it. If you did, please do me a favor and hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And if you wanna connect on Instagram, my handle is Ashton T. Joe. Would love to connect with you. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.